welcome back to the desk of Europe League. And we're just about to get stuck into our second best of one of the day. We mentioned, of course, that it'll be between Wolves and Into the Breach. Now, one of these two teams have been has been making some changes over the last few months coming into this tournament. We're, of course, talking about Into the Breach, a team has made some changes. I think you'd like to talk about them. I would love to talk about them, man. I think, you know, if we look at the roster, they've added in two new players. They've added in Creed, the second player on your left, and they've added in Oscar, the player on your far right. Now, I'm continuing my proud dad moment because I was very <laughs> proud of Adrian making it to tier one. Then he was the MVP. Creed's is the second person I'm a proud dad of. Obviously, Adrian and Creed's, if you didn't previously know, came up through kind of tier four together. They were on the most recent roster together called G Who, who did beat G2 once. Um, and yeah, they've been added into Pro League. Now, Creed's and Oscar, I think, are both very, very sensible pickups for ICB. This was a team that was going in the right places that had really turned the ship around stage two last year. Noah Raz became the best player on earth after having a horrid stage. Yeah. They've added now more firepower, right? And I think that's the one thing that they were maybe lacking. They got so close to the Atlanta Major through the LCQs, a little bit more firepower, they could have made that. And I mean, Oscar, he was supposed to get his chance a long time ago. He should have gone to SI23. Visa just put a stop to that. And honestly, these two players, they're not only just better firepower, they're also, in my eyes, more intelligent players, like individually more intelligent players. So I think they've taken a step up on everything. Again, as we said before, all these teams we see today, they've made improvements in the roster and all of them make so much sense. There's such improvements and just they have the staff to really change and shape these players because both of them are fairly young. So you have yeah. still so much potential in shaping them into being better players. And Kenny, who is a better developer of players yeah. in Europe than him? I don't think that we have one because he's managed so many players go from Challenger League to EUL and then be very good players there. He manages to like extract all the potential and 30% out of every player he coaches. It's incredible. And then talking about the development within this team, of course, last year, stage one, ninth, second stage, sixth. We're looking for them to keep continuing that upward trajectory. And I mean, that's the trajectory that they're going to be heading on. I'm not expecting anything less today. I'm I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, like, yeah, Wolf were at SI and every major. But I think that right now, Into the Bridge is probably the better team. Wow. Yeah, I stand for that. Really? Yeah, I do. Okay. Talking about their opponent for today, Wolves. And now I don't like to be a negative Nancy here, but their recent track record isn't looking all that good. Got eliminated from SI by Bliss. Got eliminated from the Malta Cyrus Series by 86. What do we want to see from Wolves coming into Europe League? You never want to start on the negative, but we, we, we've just got to have to. Is The last two events that they've played, they've been eliminated, as you say, by opponents that on paper are far weaker opponents. And it's another thing, a continuation of the story of Wolves suffering at Lanavis. Events. Obviously, they've made no changes because they've only played like two tournaments in the last three weeks, right? No time to do so. However, I've got to wonder what the mentality is like within that Wolves camp because it is continual failure after continual failure for this roster. And not only that, we've seen them voice this frustration on social media. And if you're a healthy and happy team, this is why I said that I think that ITB might be the better team. They haven't been voicing healthy thoughts. And if you have these internal issues, it doesn't matter who you go up against. It can be Team 86, who, by the way, they're not a bad team. Yeah. However, Wolves shouldn't lose to them. They should never lose to them. In a best of three as that, no chance at all. They did. Now they go up against, the, what I would say, even a better team than Team 86. And maybe I'm stretching a bit, because Bliss made it far in SI. Maybe a better team than Bliss too. Should they win against them? It, it's not just the results as well. I think that's the most frustrating yeah. thing for Wolves. It's the performances inside of those results. We know they've got it. At SI, they were one of the only team, if not the only team, that beat W7M, that actually beat the champions, the dynasty. Wolves beat them. They've got that capability. They can be all the way up here. But then also they go and lose to absolute, you know, not nobodies, but teams that they should be yeah. all the way down here. And they just don't have that consistency at the minute, it seems. Eventually that will fail. Like that mantle will break completely. Yeah. But there are some positive things. I mean, looking at their performance uh, further in history, they've made majors consistently ever since Charlotte. So that's looking good. But then in the back of their mind, they're not getting these results out of those majors that they would want to get. And I think the problem with that is the consistency. I think if you look at Mowgli, he's an exceptionally gifted player. He really Very is. Good. But the inconsistency that he shows, well, who's behind him if he has a bad game? Okay, dead shot that can step up. Again, another inconsistent player. And then after that, you're really struggling to find the people that will step up and find those kills. You know, you look at some of the other rosters across the world and across the EU. You know, if we take the world champions, every single player on, yeah. on that W7M slash now Fury roster could do that. With Wolves, it doesn't feel like that. And it's like, if you look at the players in the background there, like Shinka P4 and B were right? Shinka we see awesome clutches from. Like, don't get me wrong, we praised so much Wolves last season yeah. and last stage. They looked incredibly good. 
but all of these things will just slowly but surely grind you down. That's the thing, it's the, it's the constant, yeah. you know, the fact it will grind away and it will take them down and down the longer this goes on. And the mental, that's like, you will start building walls between your teammates. That's what I'm fearing at this point. Like, you start building something that is very negative and you guys don't like each other. <laughs> we'll say something nice no. about Now, the before we start to spiral down into negatives, because it's only the very first day, okay? Maybe they've had this week to take some time off and to reset Hopefully. themselves mentally. Hopefully. But of course, we're going to have to see what battleground we're picking for our best of one as well. We still have, of course, that nine map pool and our map pick for today will be Consulate. First thoughts on that. Yeah, so Consulate is a map that me and Fabian know Wolves very well on. <laughs> um, the one thing that I will say for both of these teams, the Consulate is very high preference according to their preferences from last stage and then Wolves SI as well. However, both teams have got a pretty bad recent record on it. Uh, ITB in the LCQs for Atlanta, they lost to Secret. They were 7 0 on this map. And Wolves, it's one of the maps that they lost to Bliss. It was the deciding map that they lost to Bliss. And they also lost it a couple of times before that in SI. So both teams like it, but have mixed results on it. You know, Oscar played with us in Fresh and Friends <gasps> against <did>. them. <laughs> so he has all the internals. Did. And if he can almost beat them with me and Jack on that That's roster, true. he definitely will beat them with the players he has on his side now. Because they are a few or like an entire there was, skyscraper no, above us in that bit, Just a little bit better than All right, they're now. slightly better than us. They're like golds and we're like silvers, and that's yep. that's the only difference between them and us. But to summarize that, that kind of says that, you know, Wolves are comfortable on this map, they like this map, but for Into the Breach, especially considering their roster changes and the fact that it's been a few months yep. since we've seen them on this map, a lot could have changed. It's definitely much more of an unknown for Into the Breach, and it's very hard to know whether they'll be good or bad at this map, whether they like this map even or not, because they've made two roster changes, and the last time that we saw them in tier one competition, was genuinely like October time, right? So it's been five months until we've seen them. So they could have developed new strats. Obviously a whole host of new operators have come out since then that they can be working with as well. And I would have expected them to do so. They definitely have. I mean, two players in itself, that changes everything and every way you play. It does change a lot, but we should have our match soon, very soon, very soon. Uh, we have Ace and Des joining us again for the second best of one. Guys, I'm going to throw you on the best or put you on the spot for this one. Predictions for our best of one between Wolves and Into the Breach. Uh, my head really wants to say Wolves, but Wolves just have a real strange habit of bottling it at the worst times. And day one admittedly isn't the worst time to bottle it, but I just feel like day one is the day to trip them up if you're going to trip them up, to be honest. I don't know about you, Tim. Yeah, I mean, why not? It's, you start as you mean to go on, right? That's my take anyway. We'll, of course, have to wait and see what's going to happen between us. Whether Wolves do have that mental reset uh, ever since last week and if they can win this game out or if Into the Breach have a very good start to their Europe League. But it is Consulate and you two can take it away for that. Thank you very much for that one. And here we are for day, for day two, for game two. Day, day one, game two. Well, it's really hard today, Tim, it turns out. One of those, again, that I think everyone's been looking at and asking as we ask every single stage, as we have done for the last three, if not four years, what walls are we going to see in the build-up to that major? You pretty much expect them to be getting to these big events, but to do that, they've got to best out some incredibly strong teams coming into the 2024 season of EUL. Are they going to find themselves bested on day one and fighting uphill from there, or do they bring out a strong performance? Only one way to find out, and that is through getting into the game. Yep, here we go. It's uh, another one where we've got a few new names to check out. We've got slightly new map we don't um, you know we haven't had the uh, reworked version of consular in the map pool for all too long uh, so we're gonna see a little bit of that as well always a fun map i think it can be a tough one for the attackers working their way through the, the labyrinth of tiny rooms and clearing it out but we'll see how itb get on with that as they're going to be on the attacking side to kick things off wolf's going to take out the monte to start us on the band Sure. Honestly, I do think at least with how things stack up, I'd probably do favor walls coming into it. But into the breach, yeah, new look, new roster. There's been plenty of surprises over the last few days across both Japan and Europe, Tim. So heaven knows as things will keep on stepping on board. Grim going to be banned away. A strong one for this map, admittedly, especially on the top four. Executes often using that Grim to completely flood rooms with information. No one can step into the danger zone or they are revealed for all to see. Makes attacks that little bit easier when going for an execute. And Solus, no surprise. Plenty of little... Dare I say rat corners and hidey holes that a soldiers can run away to here on consulates. Not at all surprised to see that one taken away. And our last ban is going to be the Goyo coming out for walls, looking to let themselves flood in towards the site, for example, without having to worry about being slowed down by that pesky, pesky fire. 
Here we go then. Let's get into things. Round one it will be. Just having a quick look across that defensive lineup. Nothing stands out as being too wild. Still seeing quite a bit of the Azami play here in EU. We've seen it drop off a little bit in other regions. Of course, um, we've had those changes to the Keeper Barricades so they can now be taken down with bullets at range. They can just be shot. Um, the number of bullets required varies depending on whether it's a DMR or a rifle, for example. The shotguns have a different number as well. Um, so depending on how much damage is done, they will then crumble away and will need to be replaced. Or you'll see that as army rotating away. But it doesn't seem to have changed things too much, at least in game one. Plenty of his army players still present. We'll see if that's the same here for Wolves. They're at least picking her up in round one. Ooh, all right, in we go. Of course, wait for the hovers of the attackers to be locked in in the next five seconds go. or so on that defensive side. Yeah, much more of a leaning towards the stock standard. Valkyrie, Fenrir, Azami. Three of those big, powerful ones that we're going to see picked up time and time again. And Azza is going to stick in on the Amaru here as well. Normally, if you wanted for this, you're looking to go for an upstairs site of some kind. But I imagine here, because we're on the downstairs, it's much more about getting fast control into the top of the map, hoping to catch someone out. Sure enough, Azza's looking ready and waiting, maybe hoping to catch someone inside a piano. But more likely to see this going upstairs, I'd expect. Deadshot is going to be returning. Um, well, not returning, going to be heading up to the top floor to support P4, um, who is up there. So it's yeah, going to be about that top floor clearance. Breach is going to be made into Corset straight away, but more phantom pressure than anything as the IQ gets back up onto the rooftop. Now we're going to be just relocating. Looks pressure from elsewhere. The Amaru of Azur is kind of ready to go here. Got the Gara hook out and is looking to push in pressure. Mowgli going to do a little bit of damage. Yeah, Yep, as it goes in. Nice pre cam, guys. Sticking, just taking map control, just getting in there, getting that presence. Um, and they've done pretty well here. Deadshot's been forced back. I think he's going to drop down the stairs at this point. P4 all the way back over there as well. Uh, so, yep, RTB taking good, quick control. Oh, indeed. Of course, shout out as well to our observers. We've got both medics and easy for this one, which is always nice to know. Covering things out for us here on the first play day. Always a pleasure, gentlemen. Thank you for your efforts, as always. And I say a nice little catch on the free cam as well of the Amara zipping up that stairs, just in case there's someone to be caught out off the back of that call coming in. Okay, Andrew, now, on the step four we go. They were halfway into the round at this point, Tim. They've done a lot of the work they need to to get control on the top floor. However, P4 has slipped the net, dare we say, working his way across from towards Admin, looking in towards this west side of the map. And if these boys aren't careful, they haven't got those tank drones down, they are in trouble. Creed's on the hunt with his own drone, but will he catch out the mute here? I imagine he will on that cross, but P4... I think Noah's got his number. Attackers have dropped oh, the bomb. He's floor moving around. I don't think he's quite aware. No, strays in. And Noah is going to pick up an easy kill. But Deadshot is there for the trade. We saw him moving up to support P4. And that is exactly what he was in position to do. Mowgli finds Kendrew. And that is going to leave us now in a four versus three. As is trying to level things up here. But with the verticals above him, this is going to be very, very difficult. They have to move Deadshot. Or this final attacking push, relying on that presence in piano is going to be super difficult all around the map except for the sides itself but now as has got himself down here looking to make a little bit of impact but those keeper barriers even though you can shoot them out you just know they're going to find themselves getting replaced a couple of kills coming in the way for itb creed's the last one left alive two players to get it done by as he goes on three goo mines tim that's a lot of chunking and walls went out round one yeah, going to make it very difficult just in terms of, you know, when they know where there's three or four goo mines stacked up. So when they hear, you know, four of them triggering, they're going to know that Creed's has pushed in from bottom yellow. And again, it was those verticals. It was uh, the fact that Deadshot was, you know, left to play above. Yes, they cleared out P4, but it's not necessarily a criticism of RTB. Ultimately, you've got to make a choice. Um, you know, you've spent a minute and a half, two minutes trying to clear that top floor down. It hasn't worked. You've got to go for sight at some point. You've, you've just got to do it. Sometimes you can leave the Romas out in the cold a little bit, get yourself established, get a couple of kills on site. All of a sudden, they've got to play back in. But realistically, on this map, not usually going to be the case because, as you can see, so many verticals opened up that the defenders could use that without having cleared them, it was very unlikely to be a successful attack. Absolutely. I mean, good start as well. I mentioned about the whole scrap around the entire map. Wolves are kind of doing what we saw a little bit back on Clubhouse not too long ago. We were talking about it back then when really it was Savage out on the roam on the mute, just causing absolute havoc from above. 
when they were trying to attack in towards the downstairs site, you've seen a very similar thing coming out there from the side of Wolves. All that goal again of wasting a little bit of time, even when ITB are doing their due diligence. They've got the Amaro on side for this exact reason, the Dekebi, making sure they can get on through. And ITB's response in round two is saying, right, we're playing that kind of game. I hear you. Here's Nomad. Here's Gridlock. Very rare you see those two coming out as a combo. But the goal 100% is going to be to try and keep Wolves penned in. But the thing is, Tim, those Wolves have got teeth. Yep, they certainly do, and they know how to use them, Des. They're not going to be uh, certainly uh, letting them get away with anything. Deadshot, again, we saw Deadshot have a, a fantastic uh, few performances at SI, particularly. Had some real standout moments where he was putting up big numbers, and it looks like he's carried forward in E2, EUL. He's going to come out with another big kill there, um, picking up the opener this time, leaving us five versus four, and as they're off the board, goes around. This time is shut down, but Mowgli manages to cut down Kenny as we go, and it leaves us three versus three very quickly. Only 50 seconds in that's it beautiful start a much better handled yes i mean it's come down to both sides losing two members but it has been that little bit more pacey it hasn't been so i suppose cautious on the side of itv they've got themselves into some early engagement some early scraps the problem is though as we always say tim for attackers that starts to wear on them as the defenders you don't mind so much losing a valkyrie the black eyes are already out maybe a c4 has already been used but for the attackers who've got all these gadgets still to use you're looking at the four tracks in the back pocket of noah for example the rateros the juices coming out from finca everything they don't have a full complete picture here to make this execute work p4 if only he knew a spray through the window frame would probably turn to be enough but no Neither player taking some chance shots there. No one being injured. Still half the round to play. He has actually done a great job there of keeping himself in position. Noah's going to go underneath and it'll likely clear him out from the desk. you got to hold this position if you want to plant on CEO window. You can keep the man from behind desk and you can prevent pressure from the hatch. Pressure from underneath inside a piano. So definitely needs to be there. But P4 still hasn't been dealt with. He's playing this position fantastically. He's hopping back and forward to keep himself out of the sights. But it might not be enough because his teammate are falling down around him. Bibu, the latest one to be cut out of the round. And that's going to leave us now two versus three. Uh -oh. Creeds is creeping up here. Shinka's got the shotgun and he should win this engagement every time at the short range. There you go. Easy as that. Two versus two. Yeah, dealing with it again. The two teams just going neck and neck though. Every single kill being traded in response. Noah has found his way in upstairs and now Shinka a clutch master has got it all to do. A C4 in back pocket will definitely help, but they're looking out for that information. Take some shots, and Noah's not going to miss those ones, Tim. Round two, going the way of ITB. Yeah, much better um, getting the job done. They were a little bit wobbly in the mid-round. Like I said, didn't really deal with P4 very well. Didn't give themselves an opportunity to put the plant down, but it didn't matter. They went in there and got the kills and got the job done. So good stuff from them to level things up 1-1 um, and not allow Wolves to get too far ahead. That's going to be important here. Wolves are a very experienced team and they know what to do with a lead and if you give it to them, they'll keep on running. So ITB, definitely good to get one on the board now. Just settle things down a little bit. Obviously, you know, they've got players like Creed's first EUL performance. Just, um, I think we saw some nerves on the side of ends, you know, and a few of their players. So mm. just settle things down a little bit, get around on the board, get some kills in there. Um, and I think, you know, yeah, it could be a close contest as we go now. I don't think chaos will necessarily be a bad thing in the eyes of Wolves, though, right? They've been there a million and one times. You know, this roster, pretty stable over time. Yes, we saw the change of Rise being switched out and Deadshot coming in, for example. But outside of that, quite stable for a long time. And they've dealt with some of those more chaotic games and equally much slower and more stable games. And I'd expect to some degree, they probably thrive in the chaos a little bit when they know how each of the plays, where they're locally to be, how they're going to play maps like this. I'd expect that they are the ones who are looking at teams that are relying on a little bit more structure, a little bit more of a breathing space throughout the round, as ITB might expect, given their new look. They probably quite like the chaos as it unfolds. Getting our way back into things down in a second as well. A few replays from that round, some including that shotgun pump on yellow stairs. Just a nice long shot there. I, 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 P4 got away with playing around that desk for so, so long. Um, but he just sort of just played it perfectly. It was like the gridlock went in and started opening up behind desk, which, yeah, absolutely. That's what you would do to clear that position. And he hops over the desk. And then as soon as the gridlock's gone, he goes back. And he was just absolutely having none of leaving. Um, but we're going to have a piano defense for the next round. Not going to go back there again, Wolves. The setup will look very similar to you. Um, but that's because they're going to be holding on to that top floor. They want to keep those vertical 
verticals. The hatch in particular um, can be important. Gives a great view down into sight. Um, but Wolves are going to have to stack numbers up there because ITB, uh, by contrast, they're going to want to get hold of that area. Yeah, and given how the players so far, I would not be shocked at all if we see Wolves being very, very happy to go and play up on that top four. And in fact, you can see just that. Two, three, four of them playing upstairs to begin with, or with the goal of falling back down to site when the pressure does start to build up from the side of ITB. It will open up questions, though, for ITB here, is how much time, how much resource, how much investment are you really looking to make in clearing out that top floor? Because as we've seen, when they've gone to try and seek for those kills, they've always lost the same number of men back in response. So, are you prepared to lose potentially your buck, your ying, for example, even your nomad? And really, the nomad there is going to be the one that makes sure that top floor stays in control once they've got it. But now at least making sure that the bottom floor can't be used. So it really is a battle across every single floor of consulate right now, Tim. Yeah, they're just concerned about any roamers potentially dipping down into the basement. Because you're on that mid floor, like you said, you want the vertical to hold on to site directly. But the basement is a really good opportunity to rotate and get a flank potentially. So, yeah, get the double air jab there. Prevent any push-up yellow stairs. That tells us a little bit as well about where the attack is going to come in from. It's going to look to get a plant down inside of piano more than likely because they're concerned about those yellow stairs oh. which is going to be your immediate point Mowgli just can't find his shot come down and runs <laughs> headlong into Azza without a clue that he's there and that's going to be five versus four with another entry going over to ITB all sprint took the yellow stairs from Azra as well so it must have been a great call coming in but there was someone challenging on I that near window that. Good response and Legion taking offline as well. The rechargeable gadget removed from the round, but most critically, Mowgli, who's been going pretty good at this game so far. Type the kills alongside Deadshot. Not too surprising given they are the two entry players for this team. But again, him being offline makes it a hell of a lot easier for ITB. And you hear those Candelas coming out, Tim. That means it's go time. Certainly does, and Wolves are there to stop them, Des. There's Deadshot, P4, B-Boo, one kill apiece. Deadshot with the Nitro, and Wolves collapse in style all over ITB, finding three kills in a heartbeat there and closing out the round. Fantastic stuff from Wolves to hold on to that piano site. That's going to leave us two on. Beautiful stuff, and... A real good kind of like crush from them as well. It was a great attempt by ITB. You know, dunking all the gadgets in. You've got that numbers advantage. Really looking to overwhelm Wolves, which is quite funny because when I think about Wolves, when they first had this new look, they first got picked up by Wolves. One of the first games that we cast them on was actually on Clubhouse. And I remember seeing a really good top-down execute of them executing in towards Human Bedroom. And what we likened it to at the time was that they were like a pack of wolves, quite literally. They spent half the round droning things out, figuring out what was going on. And then at the snap of their fingers, everyone was inside a side, bursting in from different windows, different entry points, completely overwhelming the defenders. And ITB have just tried to do the same onto wolves. But like I said earlier on, wolves are used to this kind of gameplay. They've been at it for years now. And so they've got the composure. They've got the experience to deal with those slightly more chaotic moments when comms aren't really all that effective because there's so much going on. Just a really good reaction. It was just that couple of seconds from Wolves just absolutely decimated the round. They were absolutely ready for it. Oh, yeah. Um, and yeah, just fantastic, uh, fantastic hold of the top floor there. So we move on. It's going to be round four and we're going to see Wolves continuing. They're going to be happy, I think, with two uh, successful defences so far. And RTB are going to be looking to maybe try and do a little bit better in this next quarter, these next three rounds before they move on to the defence. And look at this from Hazza. Got himself straight in inside using that Amaru going to be coming down yellow stairs but it looks like Wolves might just be stacked up and ready absolutely it depends if you can get away with it you know round one they tried to do the very best at the back of the phone call coming on through so it is a repeat of what we've seen before it's about capitalizing at the same time as well no one really yet to be found and Activity got to hunt down those Romans as you say it's in there the ones that gave them a little bit of a headache back in round one it's a similar sort of setup so ITB should have made the necessary changes here to their game plan to deal with this and spot out those gadgets. Uh, take a few out through the floorboards if possible with the IQ, but if not, at least ping them out. We saw this um, success from the top floor roam last time around. It wasn't really dealt with, and Deadshot is up there once again. So, mm -hmm. how will ITB deal with this differently? No Nomad on site. They're having to just watch the flanks physically at the minute. Who comes away with the win here? It's Shotgun versus Shotgun this time, and P4 is not going to have any joy as her takes him down by versus four a good entry once again for itb two in a row for us 
one of those games where I spoke about it back on club, how everything was focused around the plan. On this game, at least, everything feels more about chasing players around the map. Balls have been really aggressive. Two coming in behind as well. He's about to get pitched in. There's four players on him, Tim. There's no way he gets out alive. Down he goes as he claims his second victim of the round. Really good roam clear so far by ITB. But Tim has spent two minutes Poppin. doing it. And Mowgli is still out here along with Bibi. Yeah. So Shinka, sorry, coming in behind him too. He's really trying to push in aggressively. Do not want to give them a chance to even think about the execute. No, exactly that. Four versus two as Noah manages to cut down Shinka. Shinka been pretty quiet so far this game. Bibu steps up, manages to find one onto Oscar. It's two versus three, and Wolves have potentially a chance to hold on here, but Mowgli takes a ton of damage, and that's just going to make him a little bit more tentative to get into those gunfights because he's a breath away from death. And... ITB are certainly going to be looking to deliver that if possible. 30 seconds, just less to go. Wolves trying to hold on. They get the burst that they need. Mowgli making the use of what hit points he's got left. He finds a double to make it three in the round. And all of a sudden, it's a swing of fate. And it's one versus two. And it's Mowgli with a fraction of health, cutting them all down. One after another, after another. And Wolves take another defense. A little bit of a missing at the end there as well. The push onto Mowgli came in before the first flashes had come out, which just meant for him it was a straight up shootout on one that he came out on top. In fact, I think it was the, the pillar player, the one intended to be flashed, but Mowgli had the long angle, just weren't quite, I think, aware of exactly where he was holding inside of second sight with the soft angle opened up through towards yellow door and ultimately they paid the price for it but i mentioned it in the middle of the round tim walls are just determined to force absolutely every gunfight to be happening off the site here even when they were down to a three versus five still going out around the map looking to get aggressive and it really all started from here it was shinker and Mowgli looking to retake that middle floor and just stop them getting set up for the execute Everything is about running the clock down and everything is about interrupting ITB's game plan and they're doing a brilliant job of it so far. Yeah, it's really working for them and I kind of feel for ITB a little bit because, you know, in that last round, it's a good example. They got in there, they got a couple of kills. They were three versus two, but then they came to that final 30 seconds, that execute, that's where the problem to seems to be a lot of the time for them. They get down there, they maybe even man count, maybe have an advantage and they sort of try to step foot in. They try Try to go for it, and it Logan just doesn't work. They stall out at that last hurdle, and Mowgli doing some fantastic work there to keep Wolves in it and to win them the round, ultimately. 3-1 Wolves then, and the French side looking very good at the minute. Well, Tim, I imagine this is what many viewers are really here for. It's seeing a Deimos being brought along as well. Oscar is on the hunt here, seeing who he can find. Of course, a reminder, you have to find the operators first. You can scan their gadget, you can see them, whatever it might be. As long as they are revealed, Deimos is then able to start a hunt against them where he gets a real-time ping on where that player is. They get one every couple of seconds as to where he is to know if he's getting close or not. And we had a little bit in the pre-show about this as well. Jack, Fabian, and Ann going through this, talking about... I've never called a Jack on a broadcast before. Fresh, Fabian, <laughs> and Ann going through this a little bit as well. And just saying, you're not going to see too much of it in pro play. We've seen it brought out a couple of times, I think, in each of the regions so far. But certainly not a staple part of any team's wheelhouse. No, I think as Fabian touched on, it's one of those operators. If you've got everything else you need, utility-wise, if nothing else, he's got a great gun. He's got the AK. It's fantastic. So, you know, he's, he's going to just be useful in a fragger's hands anyways so i think yeah bring him along get a bit of intel as well um also just getting a bit brave there stepping out taking the silver oh, knows that somebody's in there with him and they're gonna cut him down it's 4v4 as creeds manages to get on him but bebo's there for a big double and he breaks the back of another rtb attack just again walls keep on breaking itb down when it feels like they might make a little bit of progress Walls just bite back time and time and time again. ITB, I imagine, will be kicking themselves after this game at how many times it feels like they've been in such a commanding spot to really take the charge and around. And instead, it just all crumbles away. Oscar and Azza with it all to do against these remaining four players. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of work ahead of them. They've got time on their side. That's one thing. They can get on the drones. They can see what's going on. And they've got a minute to work with. But the thing is, every bit of noise that they make, every bit of clue that they give Wolves of where they're coming from, they've got power positions to play against. Uh, the shield on bending with Bibu in behind there. I can only imagine he's got FNATs ahead of him as well. Going to be really difficult. Oscar is 
is going to be one that has to try and push forward into this. 30 seconds left to go, and time is starting to wear thin now for ITB. It's now or never. You've got to push. Bibu oh. pops up, manages to get one. Can he find the second? No. Shinka's there in support. Triple in the round for Captain Bibu. And that's going to be Wolves taking another. Just feel like they're playing with their food a little bit of points here, Tim, doesn't it? ITV at points really being chewed up and spat out throughout these rounds. And again, I come back to it earlier on. We spoke about the fact that for this roster, yeah, sure, there are a couple of changes that have come in. There's going to be a little bit of gel in time, whereas Wolves have been together for a long time now. They're just on point with this sort of thing, and they know how to play out these round ends. But it feels like their playground at the minute and consulate, and all we're seeing is ITV just being run into the meat grinder round after round. Oh, yeah, it's um, it's definitely, as he, uh, you can see it on a few of the faces, obviously, you know, paying attention into the tactical timeout as well. But uh, ITB, the pressure is on, backs to the wall. Uh, they're coming out against a very good Wolves side here. Um, Wolves certainly seem to have um, really settled into this one quickly. It's like you say, they're not even really playing on site too much. They're just challenging ITB wherever they want to come into the building. It's not worked out perfectly for Wolves every single time, but even then they still seem to, you know, on that back line, have a way of getting the round done more. Like, it's a little bit over aggressive that time, but it didn't matter because it just baited them into the opportunity for Bibu uh, to pick up that big double. So, yeah, Wolves, whether things go right or wrong, just seem to be finding a way to come out on top of every situation. I do, and now they've got one more round to come out on top. ITB after the back of that tack time, mate, you're hoping we'll come in here with a bit of a game plan to get just one more round on the board. Yeah, going into that second half, four and two on your attacking half, or two and four on your attacking half, you won't feel so hard done by knowing you're coming up against, again, a team that has really brought their A game so far today. Then maybe you find yourself getting some good defensive rounds on the board here on Consulate. But I feel if they go down 5 1, Tim. It's going to be a bit of a mountain to climb back. They simply won't be able to scale. Yeah, it feels like a bit of a slippery slope at that point, doesn't it? Um, you know, they've got uh, new play. You know, new players coming in that the you know the teams having to settle and then have it you, really the teams that come back from you. You know, you, you five one def deficit deficits. That was difficult to get out. Sorry, mate. Being you today. Words yeah, not five one deficits. I don't know if do it or anything. Just because W7M manage it, you know, that's a team that are roster that have been together for a long time and had a lot of success, and so you don't have all those issues to deal with as well. So, yeah, I think um, coming back from a 5-1 is going to be a big ask. Not impossible, but a big ask for ITB. So, yeah, for me, very, very important round for them to win here on the attack. For starters, well, a lot of work being done by the Rateros and a little bit of a slower start here. Not seeing Azra across on that Amaro this time around either. Things looking a little bit more safe and composed, making use of the Flores to make sure that they can chew through bulletproof cameras, for example, the Maestro Evil Eyes that might be out there. You've got Azza on the Nomad to deal again with the Bromers. So we've already seen them try and make use of both Nomad and Gridlock in one of the rounds, even at the same time, just not quite getting the success that they were looking for. But I'm hoping the combo here of the Nomad alongside the Decay I mean, it hasn't been previously, but you're hoping it's the combo that's going to work out for them. As they're just working his way back up to the top of the stairs there, the Rotero drone will go in and likely clear out some utility ahead of him, but also give a little bit of information as well. Flashbang goes in and you feel like Azza knows that there's likely a challenge going to come, manages to take down the FNAT. And Kendra just watching those rear stairs there. Azza, the peak, just not... I'm in favour in him there. Bibu manages to find him on a beautiful yeah, look at the reverse well. angle. Mowgli manages to find Kenny as well. That shell of stairs Fucking opened man. up. And once again, Wolves are just in the driving seat here. Oscar can't find his man. P4 is there on the cover. They always seem to have the answer. Again, like I said it earlier on, but ITB really are just being chewed up and spat out on this map. It's, it's Wolves' domain. It's their play park. And there's nothing simply to be found for them. Creed's going to try and do what he can here to bring this round to something for them in the last 60 seconds. But it goes to tell you, Tim, that in every single round, no entry kill has come after the 130 mark, except for in round number one. Everything has been otherwise down to this absolute slugfest that has been a punishment for them in the early parts of the round. The Rome game coming up from Wolves has paid absolute dividends for them, and they'll be rewarded with a very, very comfortable 5-1 lead, lead going into the second half. Yeah, Mowgli's playing really well um, as well. He's always a dangerous player if he gets himself rolling. Um, always going to make life very, very difficult. So at the half, we will 
switch sides, then ITB will move on to the defense. Maybe they'll find a little bit more comfort here. They should have the setups ready. They should be prepared. Um, you know, everybody knows what they're going to do. Everybody knows where they're going to play. I think the, the main difficulty at the minute is that they've started losing the gunfights. In the first couple of rounds, they were going in there and getting a couple down and finding themselves maybe in three versus threes, whereas over the last couple of rounds, Wolves have just stretched their legs a little bit more and it seemed to have found another gear. So for me, RTB, they need to just dampen that down a little bit, go out there, win a couple of gunfights, give themselves a man advantage on defense and make Wolves do some thinking now. And that's the thing. Can you really make them think? We always say it's in two halves to a game of Siege. It could be a very different ball game now as we step into round seven. But for me, again, I just feel that... <laughs> There's always a difference of like when a team is clearly just really kind of like coming up against it and the team has got much stronger defenses than the other team do attack. But there's other times when a team really is just having the run of things and given it hasn't become down to setups as such, it's more been down to walls just again, treating it like a little bit of a ball game for them and running through ITV. I think when it comes down to those gunfights, you're still going to see them coming out on top. Like Bivu's seven and one, Mowgli's at 10 and four. They really have had the run of things. Are just waiting with that nitro in hand of course you can open up across the top of the wall there so he just wants the call or the sound cue to say that somebody is inside of admin and he will launch that over there and see um, if he can pick anybody up with it but for the time being wolves not looking like they're going to be playing directly into that um noah again just peeking to pause it there see if the wall's been opened he will hear that it is now and so pressure will start to mount very quickly inside a site here for rtb a nice little stat in the top left corner, probably been sourced out by Fresh, that one. Reloaded. Wolves have played by far the most rounds out of any EU team in official competitions last year, with 701 rounds spanning EUL, Majors, and the Six Invitational. The EUL average was almost half of that at 368. And like I said, Tim, these guys have played a lot of Siege. It's great to see for over the top, but Mowgli's just ready. Going to be scanning there as well. Uh, make sure that there's no cams in there that are going to hurt them. There is no Valkyrie on the board, but they may not be aware of that if they haven't scanned out everybody yet. Um, so just making sure that there's nothing that's going to be causing them a problem. And Noah just holding this tight angle here, not playing, not choosing to play down by the vending machine. A little bit more aggressive here and picks up a nice nitro onto Mowgli to get things going. That's what I said I wanted from ITV. Get out there, get some kills, and just force Wolves to do a bit of thinking and that might just slow them down a bit. You know, completely given as well. Two really good C4s coming out. I know the first one was shot out, but if not for Mowgli's reactions, it would have been one kill and that second one, a comfortable second. So good start for ITB. Again, trying to slow Wolves down here, keeping them at base and what Noah trying to do his very best here. Getting pressure inside a break and look towards Coffee itself. A nade coming in from below at the same time. The red indicator disappears and he's pushing downstairs. He hits him. Will he find his man? Rounds the corner and Bibu simply can't win it. Noah's into a second in the round, looks for a third, but he's getting pinched on. Got to wonder about the drone that was just ahead of Noah there. We saw it down in the drone hall. It looked to me like it was lit up. So I'm not sure if Bibu had that information to hand that he was swinging into Noah or not, but he did seem a little underprepared for it. There wasn't really much of a pre-fire and Noah able to win it out. Did fantastically well. Better from ITV, but Shinka has got in a position to put the diffuser down. As it pops up, manages to find one. Kenny onto Shinka to stop that diffuser going down with a second as well. ITB get themselves that first defense and that is really important. You just think that it might steady the ship for them. Hoping so. I mean, again, such big work being done by Noah at the very start under a lot of pressure as well. Push from Visa, a player swung in from Coffin. He had a player inside a break. He had one coming in through Copy. Wolves were really determined to get him out, but he still finds himself a double kill, gets a C4. They almost found Mowgli at round start as well. So far, a really good defense being put up. Now, how long Wolves will take that for, I don't know. Because again, coming back to what I said, I felt that they were really the dominant ones in that first half in terms of not just the, the overall like gunfights they were taking, but overall the mental game looks to be solely in their favor as well. I imagine if you find them losing a couple of rounds here, Lilium will step in and say, right guys, chill. We absolutely stand them first half. More of the same. Stop being so nervous about it. Let's really try and make this close out now. I mean, the other side of it is they did really try, you know, a lot of nades being thrown up there. They were pushing in for pincers. They did all they could. No, it was just better. Yeah, I think... So it was a, a, a really important round for ITB to win, as I said, coming in. They don't want to be facing 6-1. They want to get that first defence on the board. 
this for me now is the big test, round eight, because they're not on that top floor. And I've said this about top floor sites before. You're sort of playing on a more limited space. You don't have to worry about the rest of the map quite as much. You know, yeah, there's a potential for maybe a buck underneath causing some, you know, chaos vertically. But generally speaking, you can just hold that one level. Now they're in the basement, they've got a lot more work to do because they want to keep hold of piano. They want to keep hold of expo. They want to keep hold of those positions. So they're going to be spread thinner. And that's when those fights are going to become more difficult to win, going to become more critical because there's not necessarily always going to be somebody else there to impact on their death should they lose a gunfight. So more important round coming up for ITB. Three C4s in this round as well being brought out. I think after the success of the last couple, I know one was obviously shot out, but was going to find its target. Otherwise, Scanning. really doubling down on it. And we were having a good chat in like a little talent group chat we've got Stop actually it. between the games about, you know, the indicators. Now we don't see it on the observer side of things, but players do have that ability to line up these C4s, guarantee they're going over a wall, for example. And it was that question of, you know, should players have that or not? And realistically, I think maybe until a decision is made around that or until teams just get more used to expecting it, C4s and the like will become even more powerful compared to what they were before. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like you say, if, you, if you're if you able to use that, it's going to give you, you know, a much higher sort of degree of accuracy, um, you know, in, in making sure that they land sort of on point. So, yep, definitely something teams are going to have to be aware of, um, you know, being prepared to, to combat that. Um, we will see how that develops. But for now, the round is developing. 1 minute 30. RTB are actually doing really well. Five versus five. Half of the round has been burnt out. They've still got players out in the map. We can see here Creed. I think he was supported by Oscar as well. He's going to be taken down. No, Morgley, and this is where ITB need to improve. Creed gets taken down, and this is what I said, if you remember. On this site, there's going to be less opportunity to impact on each other's deaths because you spread thinner. So now Wolves get the kill, but also solidify that manpower advantage because there is no trade coming in. Isn't just yet, but here we go. The call comes in, and they bolt it off down those stairs to as soon as you see them, they disappear back into the shadows once again. So, good attempt from Wolves to get a little more control in the early round, as you say, with Kreese being taken offline. It's a good start. And also, with the call coming through, it's going to force these members of ITB back. So, it does feel like Wolves have found themselves at least a little bit of breathing room in this round where they have slowed things down. However, it's all about actually closing out the rounds from here. Yeah, that's it. They've still got to get onto site and think about getting that diffuser down. They've got a lot to play into there. There's keeper barricades creating a lot of dangerous angles that RTB can use. So whilst, yes, they didn't manage to impact or trade Creed's as death, they've still burnt a ton of time. And Noah picking up that one. Morgley is huge. Oscar has it. Managed to pick up one apiece and Wolves have been caught slipping. They dropped the hatch in the final 15 seconds. P4 taken down. And it's three versus one. Deadshot almost certainly going to be losing this round. He's just trying to find a kill. Cannot see anybody. And that was a great flank from Azar and Oscar there. Really pushing that round over the line for ITB. Two in a row. And they're starting to get some momentum. 5-3 now to Wolves. Just... It's almost like an exact replica of what we saw back in the first half. Two halves to a game of Siege really coming into its own here, Tim. Didn't expect it, but the rounds are playing out in a very similar way. As mentioned, ITB this time around being the ones that are getting those late round flanks onto Wolves. Exactly the kind of stuff that was stinging Wolves, uh, stinging the ITB, sorry, when they had the man advantage in several of those first half rounds and still found themselves stepping and losing out to the side of Wolves. Five and three then, that five one, Tim, is suddenly start, not starting to look so advantageous, is it? No, exactly that, and it just feels like it's slipping a little bit. As I said, I expected maybe just that little bit of extra comfort from ITB when they're playing in their setup. Um, you know, as a newish team, that's the bit that you can focus on, is the defensive strategy. Attacking-wise, you can do your VOD prep, you can look at what teams are doing, but we're coming into a slightly new meta, new operators, um, and there is the potential for things changing, so you're always going to have to react on the fly a little bit. And the longer that you play together, the more plans you're going to stock up, you know, the more more different attacks, plan A, B, C, that you're going to be able to roll Jack through. But for the time the being, you know, it may be that on the attack, it's a little bit limited for ITB. However, on the defense, they know what they want to do. They know what the setup is, and Wolves are having to play into it. And right now, ITB are doing fantastically well in the first two defenses.
Well, here's a real screw you comp coming out from Wolves here. Seeing that blitz, the KB and the Ying on the right. Makes you feel sick just looking at it, to be honest with you, Tim. It will start out a little bit slow, especially if they want Mowgli to get some work done with those Roteros. And it's always that question of, like, does the team want to go fast? Does it want to go slow? The answer here really is slow, I imagine. Yeah, Shinka being on the Ying as well, normally one of the backline players of the team. There's going to be a little bit of prep work first, and I imagine they storm their way through. Hang on a second, though. Hold that phone. 40 seconds in, and a candela's ready to get some room, Tim. Rotero drawn just being used as soft breach as well. Um, just to more. create any angles that are needed, like you say. And Candela is ready to go. And you just feel that Wolves are waiting for a little bit of information here or a little bit of movement before it's going to be 3 2 1 go. Shinka sends go. one in. And there we go. The drop comes into yellow. Bibu is bullying with the blitz, but it's not going to work as Noah and Kenny. They stand tall as a manager's to find one as well. And all of a sudden, blink of an eye, it's five versus one. And Wolves are facing a potentially flawless defeat in round nine. Oh dear, oh dear, Tim. It's all crumbled. They can't make a slow attack work. They can't make this fast one work either. ITB have just had the answer, and I wouldn't be surprised if this turns to be a bit of an unofficial timeout into an official one here. Half the round still to play. P4 up on the roof. No one can get him, unless it's a magical C4 that comes out from Noah. But they may just find themselves using this time for a little bit of a conversation here about how they fix the situation they're in. It's going to be 5-4. It's going to be three rounds on the bounce to ITB. And I mentioned it earlier, I wouldn't be shocked if Leland calls an attack timeout here just to reset the boys' mental here because they cannot find a way through. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, at this point, it, it's getting to, to a stage where it's going to need a little word. 5-4 from 5-1. It's not looking pretty for them. And the thing is as well, round after round that they're able to collect beautiful shot from P4. I'll just stop to say that, but no one's there for the collection. It was a bit meaningless, but a nice shot nonetheless. Um, you know, the more uh, rounds that ITB get, I spoke about that confidence potentially. You know, you've got players that are really settling in now. And the yeah, the first couple of rounds, you think, oh, Wow, you know, debut in ABL, in EUL, sorry, I'm, you know, I'm getting into this. But now that's long forgotten. This is just another game of siege now, I'll tell you that. Um, and they're really starting to, to find their feet and do well. So ITB, yep, certainly looking dangerous. I mean, they're good at this point. Questions to ask. Can they do it? <laughs> if it's starting to feel like it's going that way, Bibu's back. Probably gone outside his room there and just gone into the hallway and just gone, ah! And then come and back down again. Up. That's it, yeah, and just get things back on because it is falling off crap very rapidly. Here we go. Let's see if they can change things up once again as we find ourselves back on that top floor, Tim. No crazy ranky style executes coming out here by the looks of it, but fully expect they're going to have something in their back pocket to get this one over the line. They only need the one to get themselves through to overtime. I didn't see who starts on overtime defense or attack, but at this point, I imagine both teams are praying that they are remaining. on the defense when it comes to overtime. Bomb located by attackers. Five seconds Here left we go then, round 10. Will the RTB train continue Position rolling? More walls there the ready to derail them. We'll see over the next few minutes as is going to be banditing that wall out again, which is what we saw previously. Um, obviously, just doing all that they can to try and keep them out of admin. Um, this was the first round that, uh, the first site, sorry, that RTB were able to get the win on. Uh, it went well for them. They were able to get a little bit aggressive. And Nitro went in through to copy and got a kill onto Morgley. And from there on, it just kept rolling for ITB. Um, Wolves, are they going to have a solution? Closet is going to be opened immediately by Shinka. That's going to be the first order of business. Upside down repel just to see if he can pick up any cheap freebies maybe, but uh, otherwise he'll likely be up to roof and off to help elsewhere. I had the dulcet tones of easy in my ears telling me that ITB start on the defense team. Oh. Things are going to start to sound a little bit peachy if we get towards that point in the game. Still, we've got to get ourselves through regulation. Still a few more rounds to go yet. I feel like we're at a bit of an overtime, to be honest with you, Tim. Wouldn't mind that on day one of EUL. Oh, exactly that. Here we go. Um, as a, again, mm. pressure mounting, but he didn't really deal with this position too well last time either. He was supported, of course, by Noah getting that opening. Um, but again, nearly a minute and a half before Azza has to leave there. And they still haven't made any real progress past that area in towards Vending. It's going to be very, very difficult again for Wolves. They really are pushing from this side. They've not considered CEO window or top yellow by the looks of things. And they obviously believe that they could get it done from here. And you hope it's so. But ITB looking unbothered in this round. A much slower one compared to what we've seen for most of them. I mentioned earlier on that stat that very few of our rounds have kind of gone past the 130 mark. This is one of them that is slowly whittling down to be our slowest round so far in terms of the entry. In fact, 
but it's passing the 113 mark, and that's exactly what it is. But the action is now going to spring in with about a minute still to play. Moby's in and looking for his man, he's going to find Kenny. Have they found their way through? No, because immediately there is a response. T4 on the underside as well. P4 is ready and waiting. There's the fire burns out in front of him. He's pinned here for a second, and Noah is the man that you want in this position, Tim. He's an absolute demon under pressure. Yeah, absolutely that. Just watching for P4 taking the opportunity maybe to try and put that diffuser down. We'll see whether he does or not. He's just waiting for the support to come along that he needs. Bibu knows that there is somebody underneath that you say just needs that to be dealt with and then P4 will be ready to press the button. Azza does manage to find Deadshot. Big Nitro from him and that leaves us now four versus three. 30 seconds and Wolves are scrambling here just trying to take those long range fights. Azza, he's got the kit in front of him. Surely there's no way. Bibu Bibu manages to pick up Noah, but Creed's is there to mop up. And ITB, they are on the comeback trail, Des. Aren't oh, they just? That was Bibu's first kill, by the way, of this entire half. He was 7-1 and one coming into it. But it just goes to show Wolves are really struggling to make themselves be heard in this half. ITB are absolutely charging through their opponents on day one. And what a start this would be for Creed's here in EU. Yeah, it really would. Um, there's some big numbers being put up. I'm looking forward to getting back into game here and A, for the action, but B, for a look at that updated scoreboard just to see how a few are doing. Az has just gone fantastically well in that round. Big Nitro kill, puts the diffuser down on the ground as well. Like you say, Creed's, I know, saw him on, I think, five or six earlier, so he could be getting up towards sort of double figures, um, which is a great opening performance from him as well. So, yeah, very much impressing so far. And ATB really sending a message from the defensive side here. Yes, the attack was a struggle, but right now, I'm not sure I'd put it past them, Des, to actually go one better than Wolves here. I think they can. Go for the 6-0 and win it in regulation. Like, Wolves haven't really looked close. It's been the thing. Like, I'm looking back at how many players have survived every round for Into the Breach. There have been no less than three players alive at the end of every single one of these defensive rounds. It hasn't come down to a 1v1 clutch. It hasn't come down to something mental to close the round. Like, I don't know, a C4 to close things out at the end. They've dominated Wolves throughout the entirety of this half, and I'm struggling to see how they find a way back in. Yeah, very much so. I mean, we've... <laughs> Seen Wolves a couple of times on Consulate, and I think it's not even necessarily about the map. You know, we've seen this change in fortune from Wolves within a game sometimes before, um, you know, where they just look sort of red hot and then they get to the change and it just doesn't really stick. And that's certainly the case right now. Oscar is going to be applying those F nuts for the breach and bottom of yellow stairs to prevent any pushes coming in through there without RTB being aware. But RTB right now, they must be fantastically happy. They've come from 1-5 down to leveling things 5-5 on the scoreboard. And what a story we are having on play day one of EUL. Ain't we just, ain't we just. Two more rounds to see them taking that 7-5 and walking away with all the lion's share of points they want to be taking out of this game. Now at least, still looking to keep them challenged around the map. It's as a solo roaming on the top floor for now. So that should be the first port of call for Wolves is to get him cleared out. Could easily slip his way down the yellow stairs though and rejoin his team here. No bother at all. Cheeky little C4 over the top. There's a good attempt coming on through. But Wolves, I think, are a little bit wise to these C4 heavy antics of ITB. Still two more in pocket though. Yeah, Az is just going to be... He's, yeah, the thing is, you can see those couple of kills affecting these players. Azza gets a good couple in the last round. He's peeking onto the skylight. He's ready to take the fight. And ITB just all seem to be sitting up a little bit straighter here after the last couple of rounds. And it's fantastic to see. Creed, as I said, he's got himself up to seven now. Noah on ten. Those three really sort of forming a, a bit of a front line here for ITB that is holding back Wolves. Creed is going to be above. They've got the battle cams as well that are going to be supporting him. And right now, Wolves, they're on the clearance. Yeah. They've got the need. Vertical control established. Rams gonna work. You've got people up there still as well. Still two more of those boogies to throw out too. Lots of vertical control to come on through. And the question really turns to ITB and what are they doing? Not normally the answer when you're starting to get pressure from above is to step off the site and instead try to play proximity. But they're taking the word proximity a little bit loosely here, Tim. Does he see the head? Yes, Creed's does. Weaves it through and finds Bibu. I had no idea that he was even there still. The drone game, maybe not quite up to snuff here for Wolves so far. Yeah, Creed's played that super cool there. He knew the drone had missed him, kept himself in position, and, and it was a matter of time. He's got himself out of dodge. Brilliant play. Text another one. Oh, and 
Absolutely the one, Creed. Absolutely unstoppable right now. Cannot find the last, but it doesn't matter. The damage has been done with a huge triple. And Wolves once again find themselves in a 1vx. Mowgli this time trying to close out the round. But it's almost certainly going to be too little, too late. Wolves fail to deal with Creed Attackers and they've paid the price. They really are, Tim. I mean, again, come back to what I said at the end of that last round. We've barely seen a round close with anything less than three players alive for ITB. There's four here. Maybe Mowgli finds one. Maybe he finds two. But the round just isn't close. And they've got the Krees to thank for that. Oscar gets the close. They're up to match point, Tim. Five rounds on the bounce. Oscar swinging with the bailiff there for the final kill. And like Why I not? said, it's just little signs like that that make you think ITB are really feeling confident here. That's five rounds in a row. If you've joined us into this game, ITB were 1-5 down at the half. Wolves not only winning five of those first defensive rounds, but they looked so good for it, Des. They were on top of them. Uh, you know, and as it went, they were picking up pace. Round five, round six, Wolves were, you know, winning by more and more in the first couple of rounds. Yeah, the round had finished. Wolves would have a couple left alive. Round five, they had four left alive. Round six, they had three left alive. They were winning them comfortably at that point. But then all of a sudden, ITB come online. When they get on defense, they've won five in a row. And it is now them who are certainly feeling like they can get this one done in regulation. I'll tell you what. It's crazy seeing the yeah, boys that we play around with an Adrian and Creed just running around, deleting people. I've been watching them do this for months, man. Uh, <laughs> I can think that's a couple of quotes, actually. A couple of times I've played a couple of the games. I think it was the Adrian specifically. And we're just like, how are these kids this good? <laughs> and it doesn't seem to ever stop. The pair of them have had a field day, but this time around it's Creed. The man of the moment. Again, a shout out to Noah. The guys all mentioned turned into a bit of a superhero himself towards the back end of last year. My God, is it continuing? A good few scary teams really starting to rise up here, Tim, who historically have been, you know, lower half teams, but they're really looking like they can start putting big teams to the sword, starting with Wolves here in just one more round. Yeah, absolutely. bibu has been picked up on the Pulse Heartbeat Scanner. That information was being fed into Creed's, but I like this. They've not gone over aggressive. They've not gone running out of the door. They've not anything else. It's just, yep, yeah, he's going to come into admin, right? So we need to play for an admin hold rather than getting over aggressive and throwing the life away. So I like to see that because, you know, once you've got five rounds in a row, it's pretty easy to feel like you're absolutely indestructible. But no, ITB are playing this smart. They're playing for pace. They're playing for time. They're playing to make life difficult for Wolves. Yeah, I think keep on wasting this time and chunking through it. I know we're only 60 seconds in, but just keep on frustrating Wolves. This one feels like a done and dusted deal. With the pulse on side as well, feeding that information back and forth and all around, it just continues to be an absolute headache for them. All the information being fed from below as well, as with no one there to deal with him, also safeguarded someone out by the lesion. But the number of times you've seen them play around this staircase inside of Teller's archives to get back, oh, sorry, Teller, sorry, to get down into archives, it's been absolutely beautiful. Feels like Wolves are chasing shadows at some point. Yeah, it really does. I mean, they've had a minute and 30. They're starting to work their way across that top floor. Still not confidently in control, I don't think. And they know that they've got players around them that are going to make life a misery. If they can, Creed is looking to challenge onto the top of Yellow Stairs. He knows he's being pushed from multiple directions. One kill comes in, Mowgli onto Kenny. This might just be what Wolves need. b oh he manages to find Creed. Can Wolves grab a round in the nick of time? P4 is going to be down, well, but Mowgli, he down. manages to find Oscar. Wolves have got time to collect P4. Five versus two now, and it looks like we might just get an e a little bit more enjoyment out of this one before time's done, Des. It does. Can they come back from a numbers deficit? They've barely been here throughout this half in the first. Yeah, absolutely. But here, considerably less. So Wolves have played the game just right when they needed to the most, Tim. It's been a while since we've seen an attack around win, but it feels like we're building up towards that point. 30 seconds to go, though, and so much can still go wrong. Yeah, it really can. His time going to be a critical factor here. We saw Wolves have oh, no. a couple of touches. No one manages to pick up more. No. And there's another. As a, it's now two versus three. Have Wolves left it too late? 20 seconds left to go. And ITB finding oh, kills left and right. Des Azza manages to find one with a nitro. And Noah's up above. They have no idea. 
No, manages to shut down Bibu. Dead shot, no choice but to go for the plant, and it will almost certainly be over. But no, they can't get there. He comes oh. back, and he cannot find any kills. As a right place, right time, ITB win a 2v4 to close out six rounds straight from a 5 1 deficit to win the play day one matchup against Wolves. That is absolutely ludicrous that they pull out that two versus five. Really completing the circle as well because we spoke at game start. You're coming up against the season team. They were capitalizing on chaos in the first half. But ITB, a flawless second half. Absolutely ludicrous. And as said, Tim, that's really going to start putting some shivers up the spines of some of our big players and big teams that we've got here in the EU League. Yeah, what a performance we've just seen there. There's a couple of new names to everybody at home that I think they're going to be thinking, I want to watch more of this guy next week, you know, tomorrow, play days following. And believe me, there's going to be plenty more to come from them. But what a performance from ITB and what a way to light a fire under this play day. That was a hell of a return to her from them. If we can have three more games like that, I am not going to complain. But Anne and the desk are ready. Guys, over to you. Thank you so much, Des and Ace. Unfortunately, they didn't get to say the iconic lineup that they're going to overtime, but that final round, a 2v5. I mean, we don't have seats here, but it technically had us at the edge of our seats. Yeah. I nearly fell over. <laughs> what what, I, I, like, what the... How the hell did they do that? I'm honestly like, wow. Like, I, I'll be honest, that game was a game of two halves with some of the most honking attacks I've ever seen inside of EUL. <laughs> but fair play to ITB. Every single defense on the comeback. That's incredible. Their teamwork was so much better on the defense. That's yeah. the biggest thing. Because we saw the gaps in their attacks and it just nothing seemed to work together. So yeah, it was a rough start for them, but they managed to come that back and it shows the mental resilience and how good of a team that they are. I said it before, I think they're a better team. Maybe they didn't show that they were that much better. But they definitely played and they came to play. They tried stuff in attack, didn't work out. I think the map played a huge part yeah. in the way that this game played out. Obviously, defending Consulate is, is so comfortable. I think both teams, well, especially ITB on their attacks, they tried to be a little bit split with their attacks in terms of position and all go at once. And they were a little bit out of sync. That's kind of the rush you might expect for the first game that they've had in six months. And I think that's why they, you know, genuinely looked pretty bad on their attacks. When you give opportunity to Mowgli and Deadshot to take a one and then a one and then a one, they're going to take them and they've got the ability to just win and string those kills together. However, when it flips back over, ICB get on the defense. They were causing so many problems for Wolves that Wolves were just not solving whatsoever. Even in that very last round that we saw there, all five of Wolves players dropped a hatch that a Pulse was holding from two floors below. All five of them went down that hatch. He got two kills in a C4 and then the bunk came in. Like, wow. It's just mistakes on Wolves' part on that yeah. attack there. Wow. But we, we have to look at it from like what mistakes were ITB doing. What you were saying in their attacks, it was not really up to the standard that they need to have to be competing at this level. It worked against Wolves today, but they need to time their actual pushes much more yeah. together. Because the entire theory that they're playing, which we have that keyword split theory for, that all revolves around everybody doing things exactly the same point because you're opening gaps for each other by contesting players and basically keeping them busy. They didn't do that because they lost one duel and when they lose the first duel, everybody in Wolf's camp can all of a sudden always go two plus one. So they always can be two versus one. So it didn't play off that way. So what I'm hearing is, and if to summarize that, was that the first half really came down to Wolves having these really good individual yep. moments. Of course, the map yep. leaning in their way as well with that being on defense, their start. I mean, you saw it in the stats. Mowgli had a great uh, game in total, actually. And then, of course, on the defense of Into the Breach, they were flawless. They were creating these problems for Wolves, but that really puts up a good start for Into the Breach. I mean, we talked about their trajectory, right? Ninth in the first stage, then sixth in the second. This is already putting up a really good start for their third stage. Absolutely. I think it's like, I, I would consider Into the Breach a middle of the pack team that wants to try and be the dark horse to make yep. that third or fourth spot into the Major. If they are to do that, they have to beat those teams that are in the third, fourth slots for the Majors, which Wolves has been that team for probably the past 18 months. They've done that today, which I think was exceptional. Yeah, I think they had an amazing game. I'm super proud of them, and I think they should be proud of themselves because they really showed that how good they can be. Now, we had a difficult time picking just one player to highlight on the side of Into yep. the Breach, so we went ahead and we picked two. And we'll have them up against each other in a head-to-head. -head. I'd like for you to talk about it. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. I think uh, 
Noah Raz and Creed, both of them putting in exceptional performances today. I think Creed's obviously on his debut, you know, stepping in as a player that's never played in tier one today, really came to his own right at the back end of the state uh, of the game. And then Noah Raz, like the, the performance this kid has put in, all, if you think all the way back 12 months ago, stage one, he looked like a fish out of water. He looked absolutely lost. The progression that he's had to come in and be as consistent as he has been recently as such a big part of this team has been absolutely incredible. It has been really good to see that, but we have moved over. I'm joined here by Fabian on the, our Telestration station because we have an interview, of course, lined up as well. And we are joined by Kengo Kenny, the coach of Into the Breach. We get to ask you a few questions about that game. That first half, they had you in the first half, not going to lie, but you did came back and it was very good. Attacks were abysmal. Worse, uh, first day nerves, I'll put it down to. We, we had all the info we needed to transition rounds and we didn't have the confidence to call what was correct and we stalled and we let them play their retake game every round they played their retake game they played either to entry deny us or retake and when we knew that occurred after the first two rounds we still didn't have the confidence to then just go before they're even allowed to retake um so attacks were awful um, but Wolves, since stage two last year, have a 20% attacking win rate on this map. And I knew it was always possible that we could come back. Um, so even despite our split, um, I knew that uh, our defenses are amazing on this map. I knew that Wolves are statistically not very good at attacking the map. So I knew it was always possible. And I had full confidence in the team to bring them back round after I had a little shout at them in the timeout. I have two questions for you. First of all, obviously we have to ask, why the two players you picked up, Creed's and Oscar, what is the reason for them? I mean, we both know how good they are, but explain it to the audience as well, please. Well, anyone that uh, has followed me throughout my time as a coach, I like to give talented players the room to grow. And Creed's uh, in South Breach was plus 17 on entry for Jihu. Um, and we had to replace Kanto, who was our first entry. Creed's isn't typically a first entry um, for how he's played in tier two. He was more like a lurk flex role, but I think nowadays on the current set of the game, you've got to have, you essentially have one support player and four flexes. That's that's how you kind of see the game nowadays. So even your entry needs to be, be able to play a multitude of operators and Creed's on defense was exactly what we were looking for. We just had to shape him into the attacking role and He's been he's been outstanding. The the dedication, the motivation he showed to improve in the month we've been with him, been fantastic. Oscar is long overdue his tier one shot. He is such a reliable, such a solid player. And we were looking for a player in our back line that would be able to put up the kills and put up the reliability that you think of the best support players in the world. They're reliable. You know, in that late round scenario, they'll get that one or two kills that could change the round for you. That's why we picked both of them up. All right, and then the second question, that game was quite a hit and run, you can say, because you took a massive hit in the first half and then you ran away with it. And that confidence that they displayed, did you, as a team, is this a confidence thing that we can expect in more games where you guys still keep the cool and keep the calm, even though it really looks like, well, we're not standing a chance here? The team is always composed and the confidence is running high um, in the in the camp in the month that we've had. And I think Kendry said it brilliantly yesterday. You know how long Kendry's been in Pro League. He said this is the most confident he's ever been going into a stage before. And if that doesn't tell you what the this team has potential in, then we'll see going through the season. But start off with a win today, good stuff. I think you're going to have to use the confidence, of course, as well with your upcoming games, because the teams you've got coming up are BDS, you got Virtus Pro, you got Fnatic, maybe not in the correct order, but those are some difficult teams potentially to go up against. How are you feeling about that? Uh, we don't see ourselves as putting up the bottom of the pack. We see ourselves as competing with those teams you just mentioned to go to the Manchester Major or the second Major in the year. So. Those teams are just another day at the office for us. I, I don't care if BDS have built a super team. Yes, on paper, they could be stronger, but the game isn't played on paper. Team play, coordination, how you structure things, how you react is how you win a game. Well, that goes perfectly in line with the upward trajectory that you guys have been having over these last two stages. So of course, we hope that we get to speak to you very soon. Thanks so much for your time and uh, yeah, we'll see you later. Thank you.
That was a very good interview, very insightful, of course, on those new pickup players as well. But that was only half of our EUL day so far. We've got an absolute banger of a game coming up after the break, because that'll be G2 versus Fnatic.